Hey everybody, it's Dually1999 here. Uh, this is uh, the continuation of the engine building videos on the uh, server. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to build a boiler setup. So, for those of you who watched my diesel tutorial, you'll notice that this is uh, the same haul from that video. And that's for good reason, because it makes it easier for me. However, I did use World Edit to elongate it about 20 meters, uh, mostly to represent that for larger ships, you're going to want a boiler engine. Uh, diesels are only so good um, until they're inefficient in comparison to boiler engines. For ships probably around destroyer escorts and above and even corvettes, you're going to want a boiler engine. So uh, without further ado, let's get started on how to build the boiler engine. To make a functioning boiler setup, you'll need all of the following blocks. An obsidian block, magma block, acacia fence gate, oak sign, diamond ore, lapis lazuli block, black glazed terracotta, and either a grindstone or stone cutter. You don't need to have all three the lapis lazuli block, black glazed terracotta, or a grindstone or stone cutter. All three of them function the same, much like on diesel engines. They just count as the same sort of... They're all three different options for building your steam engines. When building a uh, boiler ship, it's important to know where your, where your smokestack's going to be. So, we're going to go ahead and lay out two smokestacks. Now that we have our smokestacks laid out, we can then decide how we want to lay out our engine room in the ship. Different kinds of ships oftentimes will have different engine layouts, but a very common and traditional setup is a boiler, steam engine, boiler, steam engine, or just boiler, steam engine. Depending on how many boilers you have, it's good to alternate between boilers and steam engines and compartmentalize the, the units. That way you are able to uh, keep your engines protected and safe. You know, it's like you don't want to put all your as the expression go, you don't want to put all your bread in one basket or you don't want to put all your whatever in the same spot so when you lose it, it all, it's all gone. So we're going to start by placing our boilers down. So we built our smokestack so we know where, this, where the smoke is going to need to go. So let's build the boiler to match. Now you'll notice that these smokestacks have a two block pathway for airflow what that means is that there's two two blocks of air um, that can accommodate a smokestack of this size if I were to increase the circumference of the uh, um, of the smokestacks you'd be able to fit three or four or however far I were to increase it that can adjust the accommodation now it's important to know that if you choke off your smokestack anywhere like that, that's the same thing as having just one block of airflow. So it's important that your smokestacks are big and consistent throughout their entire, uh, you know, their, their entire stature. But back to the boiler, you're going to want to kind of build a bowl out of obsidian. So once you've built the bowl out of obsidian, you can then place your mag your boiler fire. You don't have to use the boiler window, the acacia fence gate, but I like to do it because it's a cool detail. And you just want to put the, you just want to put, you know, it just looks cool because you can see the fire in there, adds some detail. These can go anywhere on your boiler, they could even go down here if you wanted to. Just an alternative block to using obsidian. Heck, you could build the whole boiler out of these if you really wanted to, but we're not going to do that because we are tasteful. So now that we've got our bowl laid out, we can then figure out how we're going to, um, you know, you can choose to armor it more if you want, because a, a strong boiler is a good boiler. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now we're going to attach our boiler to our smokestack. Now, it doesn't have to be straight up from uh, this, and I'll show you what I mean by that uh, when we do the other boiler. See, your, your boilers don't have to be directly below the smokestack. In fact, they shouldn't because 
they're a little bit more vulnerable than if they were away from them. And I'll explain that in a bit too. But now that we've got our boiler built, we're going to go ahead and attach our steam shaft to it. Now the steam shaft is going to run to a steam generator and a steam turbine. Basically the way that a boiler works in real life is that a boiler is providing steam which powers a steam turbine. So we're, you're, it's, it's really a simplified way of this process, like there's no condensers or evaporators of any sort. It's, uh, it's a bit of a streamlined process compared to a real steam, bo steam boiler and steam fired ships. So, but this is how it works in game. You're going to have your boiler, which is going to run to a, let's see, let's build our steam engine. So I've said this in the archives and I'm going to say it now. The optimal ratio of a boiler is one to 20. What does that mean exactly? That means that for every one magma you have in a in a uh, boiler, you should have 20 lapis blocks for your steam engine. So there's two magma blocks in here, so that means we we want 40 blocks for our steam engine because 1 to 20 times 2 is 2 to 40. Okay, so that's just a an easy way to do the splitting. You know, to do the uh, the lap is, I guess, distribution, you could call it. So, now that we know that we have two magma, which is going to equate to 40 lapis, let's build a steam engine with 40 lapis. Let's see, that's four times... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 4 times 7 is 28. Twenty-eight times two is fifty-six. We're gonna have to cut this down a bit because we don't want fifty-six, we want forty because of that one to twenty ratio. Let's see how many this is. Forty blocks, perfect. Now that we have our forty block steam engine, let's go ahead and attach her. So Something to be aware of is that a boiler does need a sign. So uh, we're going to put the boiler sign here. And the reason I'm putting it here and not like here is because when you're going to have a villager operating this boiler, he needs to be able to stand next to the sign. So the sign can either be, it could be there if you wanted to. Um, it could be, you know, like there if you wanted to. It could be there. It just has to be somewhere that, if you were a player and you were operating it, you could stand next to it. So we're going to put it there. And, an, and a reason we're not going to put it here is not just because it blocks our beautiful vent, but because this sign contributes to a boiler once, it, once it's built. Well, if the boiler detects that there's this steam engine here, it's going to think it's attached because the way Minecraft recognizes block area is the this sign is wor working like a block sort of which is attaching the two so you don't you want to make sure that there is a clear distinction in all aspects between your boiler and your uh, steam engine so that's our steam engine and uh, we're gonna go ahead and label it we're gonna label it on the back side so we don't have our signs you know touching right so let's do steam engine one. Okay, so we got boiler one and steam engine one. Well, there's another component needed for a steam engine setup and that's a steam generator. Now, a steam generator is not even that hard to do. It's for an engine about this size, we could probably get by with just this right here. So let's do this steam gen. Now. I don't usually like to lay my steam generators out like this, but since the ship is so small and I'm trying to build a ship pretty quickly for this video, it's going to be up there. You could route it off to the side here if you wanted to, or you could make it go down and you could make it do all kinds of weird stuff if you wanted to. You just have to make sure that there's a steam generator attached to the air shaft. 
So we're going to have the steam generator. Another thing too is if you have a really, really big steam engine, um, for, for example, this is 40 blocks. Um, this might be able to power the steam engine, but two blocks is better safe than sorry. Um, just make sure that you have a fairly good sized steam generator for your steam engine. Otherwise, you're not going to have sustainable pressure. Now, um, now that that's done, this right here is a boiler, steam gen, and steam engine setup. All you have to do now is hook it up to the propellers. Now, you can't have, you can have multiple boilers go to one steam engine, but you can't have multiple, st or one steam engine go to multiple propellers. So I can't, you can't, uh, you can't do something like this. You know, you can't, um, you can't hook up, uh, you, you can't do this. You can't hook up one steam engine to two propellers. It just it doesn't work in real life and it's not going to work here. So it's important that you know that rule. Now for our second boiler, our second part, it's going to be very similar to the first, um, but we're going to need to bring it back a little bit. Well, do we? We don't. But I'm going to, you know, because I want to show you guys how this works. So we're going to build another bowl, right? And we're going to put our magma in it. We're going to do the same thing we did earlier with this fence gate. We're going to put a fence gate on it. Notice how it's off center though. So we're going to have to do a little, little finessing here. It's important to make sure that you're maintaining two blocks of airflow. So what does that mean? Make sure that you're not choking off your stacks, right? You want to make sure that there's there's room in them, like this. So notice how if you were to like draw, what I like to do is I like to get like different glass blocks, for instance. And if I can draw a path out of the boiler, then I'm good to go. If you can't draw a path, then something's choked off, you know. So. You want to make sure that your smoke has a sufficient, or your your boiler has sufficient, has a sufficient airway to escape the fumes. Another important thing to note as I build the next steam engine is um, that you uh, you don't uh, you don't want to get water in a boiler. Um, if you get water in a boiler in game, the boiler will explode. And given how they are right on the keel of a ship, oftentimes for many ships, that is an instant sink. So, yeah. Now this, we're a little cramped here because we don't want this engine to be touching this drive shaft that goes to the other engine. Otherwise, the system's going to think that, um, you know, we have multiple steam engines attached to the same prop so we got to make sure that they're separated so let's count lapis block we still want that 40 magma or 40 lapis ratio though so let's see this engine's a bit weirder of a shape but it's gonna work in a bigger ship you don't have to do stuff like this you know you can just rearrange stuff around and even even on a ship like this if I spent enough time I could probably get a pretty nice clean setup going for it but let's go ahead and number our boiler or our steam generator steam gen 2 and this second boiler boiler 2 let's go ahead and do steam engine 2 and let's uh let's hook it up now let's go ahead and run a test or a scan. Oop, vehicle too long for that sign, so let's do a destroyer escort sign. Voila. Looks like we got no errors. That's always good to see. Here's our statistics. 
Boiler 1, PSI 200. That's because each magma block makes 100 PSI. There's two magma per each boiler, so a total accumulation of 400 PSI. Now, Steam Generator 1, they're both two blocks, so they're both equating to 560 horsepower. Now, this horsepower, since it's on a Steam Generator, doesn't contribute one bit to speed because it's not hooked up to a propeller. It's just a, it's kind of like a generator. Um, well, it is a generator, but it's standalone. Uh, it's just using electrical power, and it's not really driving anything. Now, a Steam Engine 1 and Steam Engine, let's see, where's Steam Engine 1? 2, both have 11200. That's matching that 40 blocks of uh, lapis, and uh, yeah, so everything's checking out good. Tells you how long your drive shafts are and your steam shafts are. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's how you build a boiler setup, and you know, you can... If you wanted to, you could hook up like three boilers to the same steam shaft, but it's important to maintain that 1 to 20 ratio for a boiler. So that's going to conclude this setup, or this video, sorry, on how to do a boiler setup in a ship. And I'll be doing other videos in the future on turrets and uh, other ship construction processes. And uh, stay tuned for those, and I'll see you guys in the next video.